Welcome to the last episode of this show this year 2020. We hope you are enjoying your holiday. And on this Boxing Day, this is what we've prepared for you. Next week, tunapanga na weka mawa hapa. Meet Sandra Vogan, a Kenyan-born entrepreneur assisting traders in Arusha to stay afloat amid COVID-19. In Kivu, DRC, a rare moment with rumba artists. Na pendelea sana hawa vijana wa Sauti Soul. And on my magical Kenya, my interaction with Samburu culture. Very well, Sandra Vaughan, a Kenyan of British origin, is lucky to be our top guest on this last episode of the year. Born in Kenya, educated in England, but doing business in Tanzania. This is her story. Sandra runs a shop that is known as This and That. She sells items like gifts and stationery. And we bring everything in from England. We bring in toys, candles, we bring in sweets. Um, it, it's a very nice shop. Gifts for you, gifts for your girlfriend, gifts for your wife and gifts for your children. And um, it's been running now for 14 years. And then I also have a job um, doing corporate responsibility. So I sponsor 20 children in Kenya. And we've also built a secondary school in Amboseli called the Lewis Secondary School. We have four children now at university level in Kenya through this scholarship program. So I help support all of that in my free time. Next week, Tunapanga na weka hapa. But what keeps Sandra even more busy here in Arusha is this open air market, her brainchild. Hapa ni Njiro shopping complex. Mwezi ya sita, rafiki yangu na ulisa mama. Sama hani, iko pale sisi nweza uza meziko. Nesema sujui, sujui, nesema, oh, corona, corona, hamna biashara, hamna ela, hamna meshara. So mimi nesema haya, tafanya market. So mwezi ya saba, tuna endele na market kama hizi. Tunakua vendo kumina mbile bus. Mwezi ya saba, nane, sherini. Sasa leo, unona, labda ni hamsini na tanu sasa. Sasa unawachaj. Unanetisha hii place alafu unawachaj. Ndiyo, ni elf tanu tu. But Tanzania tanu. So hii ni labda mia mbile hamsini. Ehe, kwa ingia hapa, bus. But a lot of that money goes to pay electricity, to bring in tables, to pay for security to pay for people to do the washroom. So it's not an income generator for me. Uh, it's a... Facilitating them. It's a feel good. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sandra was born in Eldoret, Kenya, a place she calls home. My dad worked for KCC and my mum was a midwife. And from Eldoret, we moved to Nairobi. And I spent the rest of my life growing up in Nairobi, went to school in Thika. And when I was 18, my dad introduced me to go to hospitality school in England, um, where I did my studies. I met my husband, had, had two children, and then returned to Africa. So I've been here in Tanzania now for 14 years as a Kenyan living abroad. But how did she end up in Tanzania? We weren't happy living in England. The stress of living there became too much. And so we looked for an alternative country. My sister, who's also Kenyan, she got married in Ngorogoro Crater. So we came up for the wedding, uh, fell in love with Tanzania and moved here within six months. Karibu, good to see you. <laughs> you like it, yeah? <laughs> Any challenges you face while being abroad and how do you overcome them? you know like if you need ambassadorial or consular issues if you need to renew your passport you have to go to Kenya and it's a trek and a half because you know we, we can't do things like that um, but otherwise no 
No. I thought there's a Kenyan High Commission in Dar es Salaam. In Dar es Salaam, but again, that's a nine hour journey if you're traveling by car or four hours to Nairobi. What are your future plans? What's, what's your vision? So for me, I'd like to keep doing the, the shop um, as it's a focus point. Definitely want to keep the market going. I'd like to have a few more vendors so that we fill up the whole of the back area. So at least another 10 farmers to come in with their produce would be nice. Um, and then for me, for my corporate responsibility, to get tourism back, because it's only through the tourists that I raise the money that we can do these projects. So as a Kenyan, whenever I'm out and about, you'll always see me. I have this T-shirt. I have about five Kenyan T-shirts. I'm always dressed in them. I always wear my bracelet. You cannot remove this. The Maasai physically sewed it onto me so that I can never forget my roots. <laughs> a very interesting journey there of Sandra Vaughan, a Kenyan of British origin, born in Eldoret, Kenya, educated in England and doing business in Arusha, Tanzania. Now, let's cross over to Eastern DRC, where I was given a rare treat of rumba. And guess who organized this? Major retired John Mansia, a former Kenyan paratrooper who now owns four private hospitals in DRC. We featured him recently on this show and uh, before we came back to Kenya, he organized an evening together with the Kenyan community living in DRC. And you will be delighted to learn that he gives back to the community. He does a lot of community work, not only in security, health, but also in entertainment. And this is how he's helped the Congolese musicians. Music ya Congo, hata wa Kenya wengi sana wanapenda sana. You know, tangu zamani wa Kenya Franco, you know, watu walikuwa nafurahia sana. So lakini hapa locally, particularly hapa South Kivu, tuko na musicians ambao ni wazuri sana. So normally huwa na encourage, na saa ingine hata na sponsor ili waweze ku kutoa hata muziki. Upande ya you know uh, publicity ya Skyball. Hao wametoa muziki mingi sana juu ya publicity ya Skyball. Na watu wengi sana hapa wanasikiliza muziki. So wakitosha muziki ya Skyball ikichezwa kila wakati kwa television sana sana ikiwa visual. Watu wanafurahi sana. Ani kawambia jameni mkue kitu moti. Solidarity ni mbubu. Na wakafraia sana. Mpaka waleo wajaiku wa sana. John ya tukani ni, ni mutu mwenye na support sana miziki. Ye tumemuita kwa mwa manager. Tumemuita manager. Haiko sisi tu. Na, na support presike ma, 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 ma benzi lot za, za mkavu, za goma, za kinchasa. Ye ni mutu mwenye anapenda sana miziki. Ah, bonsoir Alex. Comment allez-vous? Je vais très bien, merci. Uh, très content de vous voir. Yeah, right. <laughs> nice to see you. Wa Kenya wanaoishi hapa tunawapenda sana. Yaani ni ni watu wakarimu, watu wa pole, watu wazuri. Ni mziki labda kulikuwa wakati moja ngambo ya promotion ili meshuka kidogo sababu ya mavita, politics e, lakini kwa sasa mziki wetu tena unaanza kukamata tena nafasi yake e, barani Afrika kama vile ilivyokuwa ilivyokuwa e, zamani nilikuwa Nairobi uh, kwa ne 2016 nilikuwa kuna manager wangu alienda kunitembeza tu nilikuwa huko nikaona wengine wana muziki kule tukae sasa kudiskite voila mwana muziki mkenya ambaye wewe unapendelea sana mkenya 
napendelea sana hawa vijana wa wa sauti sol ndio ndio watu na style kuimba nao hao kwa nini sababu music de recherche tumeita world music eh yeah. uh, ndio muziki napenda kuimba sauti na, na, na sauti nzuri naweza nikaimba namna yote ile style zote zile sijui mm-hmm. Mungu atabariki siku moja nitawakutana nao hujawahi uh-huh. kutana nao tiawahi kutana nao watakutazama na watakusikia wanafikiri watakutafuta cool hey guys yeah. I, i love uh, your music sauti sol mm, sauti sol mzuri sana We now take a short break. When we return, we will come back with our year in review story as per our viewers request, and that is Kitisuru Amani project, an investment of over 300 Kenyans living in the US. Also ahead, my interaction with the Samburu culture. Kitisuru Amani Gardens Apartments, located near the International School of Kenya, are almost complete. American kitchen with featured cabinets, solar panels, bedrooms with an ensuite master bathroom, swimming pool, gym, backup generator, and borehole, among other features. Call us. Our Kenyan number is plus 254-733-926-935. In the USA, call plus 1-205-948-7797. Kitisuru Amani Gardens Apartments, where elegance and luxury meet. Welcome back. Now, this is the peak of our viewers as we wind up the year. Kitisuru Amani project, an investment of over 300 Kenyans living in the US. Take a look. When you hear about remittances from abroad, the cash would be coming into projects like this. Kitisuru Amani Gardens is a project of JRN Investment Group that brings together over 300 Kenyans living in the US. It is located on the outskirts of the posh Kitisuru on the Nairobi Kiambu border. Works are ongoing. I find the principal architect Francis Gitao Mungai and Javier Singh, the CEO of Landmark Holdings, the main contractor for this project, inspecting the works. People back home are told, no, 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 don't use a contractor because a contractor is expensive. Don't use professionals because professionals are expensive. And in the end, what they do is that they lose the money they would have spent on professionals. and they also lose the money they thought they would save by using your kali contractors but a project like this is a testimony that you can have Kenyans living abroad investing effectively and getting the project done to the standards that they know back in America where they live we are about just over 50% of the project we are on the verge of completing all the structures Uh, we are also at the moment completing the sample house which will be ready in the next one month. We expect to finish the project towards the end of next year. In Atlanta, Georgia, I met Wilson Kimani, the chief finance officer of JRN Investment Group. We created JRN Investment Group specifically to come and uh, develop ourselves we are laser focus investment we are not a church organization we are not a social organization and is the membership to the group limited to the US the organization was formed about five years ago solely started by diasporans in the US we have now seen it expand also to other diasporans in UK there are some diasporans who were in the US have relocated back to Kenya learning from uh, previous organizations we want to go step by step yeah first one yes all those are they are sold out 
We just have a few more to go and then uh, phase two is already now up for, for sale. We have in total 87 units and uh, we have got two bedroom units and three bedroom units. All the units are uh, self-contained master bedroom. They have got facilities like washing areas, they have open kitchens, they have terraces. But on top of that, we have other facilities. Like for example, we have got a clubhouse, we have swimming pool, and we have got a roof garden. Their rule, according to Kimani, is to use tested and reliable professionals. That construction, as you see as it is, we have not been there to see it. We have a professional who's doing his job. We have a constructor who's doing his job. We have heard the story of people being sent pictures of almost complete buildings to get there and find nothing. We have learned our lessons and now we, we, we've come to know there are better ways of doing these things. We have created over two to three hundred jobs over the last one year and we continue to create and educate workers. Um, we did have a little bit of a slowdown with COVID, however, with our proper safety measures, we have been able to continue to work. All of our machine operators, all of our uh, supervisory staff, all of them are local Kenyans. We are trying to become part of building our country. We have also realized that uh, we can help grow the economy. We feel so proud right now when we get daily reports that there have been several hundred people there working every day. And we know those are families that we are able to help or feed. It's a great pride. This is a very unique project. Number one, the location. It is located in one of the richest suburbs of Nairobi, Kitisuru. So we are able to do apartments which are luxurious in nature and also taking advantage of what the neighborhood has. We have two bedroom house and three bedroom house. Two bedroom house goes for 11 million, three bedroom house goes for that 14 million. The terms of payment is we do a deposit, a commitment fee of 10% and then the 80% you do during the construction. The, ten, the other 10 percent you do when you're exchanging the key with the house. They say east or west, home is best. And that question could not be more timely than now. We have seen how quickly things can turn around with this uh, COVID. Anything happened, like turmoil or political instability, and I had to relocate back to Kenya, where would I go? There's also a good, gener a good number of people who are here who strongly, they would like to work, invest, raise their kids here, but they do not intend to, to grow old here and end up in nursing homes. A commendable project there and an idea worth replicating. Now, this time of the year, there are normally many cultural activities here and there. And despite my busy schedules abroad, I got an opportunity to interact with the Samburu culture. Take a look. Samburu Karibu, that's, in, that's like Swahili. Like Swahili. Yeah. We are Samburu by tribe and we are cousin to the Maasai. The Maasai, they live in the south part of the country, down, where we live here in northern part. As the way we live, we live in a very big circle like this. So the circle itself we call it Boma. Boma, that's in Swahili word. In our own language, we call Engang. So Engang means together as one. So we preserve these small houses over here. It's covered by the boxes, plastic nylons, and uh, uh, cardboards. Before that, we are using cow dung to smear all side away, like the mass side. Yeah. But now, due to the scarcity of the materials and also the anchor of the animals or dryness of the land, so that's why you see we use plastics or boxes and cardboards. So we do keep animals like uh, cows, goat here, sheep, donkeys, and camels. 
Our main food here is blood, milk and meat from one animal. Some people they drink blood direct, some they drink and they mix using milk. We Samburu, we preserve our culture here. So we keep culture going on, 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 on all the time. We keep uh, like um, circumcision for both boys and girls. But now we stop circumcision for the girls. Now I'm the warrior. So I'm acting like the military. I look after the tribe. And we look as the, as the exit of the circumcision. So now the women now, they are, this is the time oh, they used to make the, their own beads. Yeah. And also they have small markets, so they used to display for selling for the tourism. So we have so many people from abroad, from different countries or cities. Wow, they want to know about our own culture. So they, they, they usually come and ask, what's your culture? What's the name of the community? There are so many things that they want to be told. We live near by the boundary of the, of the animals. So we don't kill the animals and we preserve them so that many tourism, they come to visit our reserve here, called the Samburu National Reserve. So they used to come and see the elephants, zebras, giraffe, all the kind of the animals that we have here, and the birds as well. So we then cut all down the trees, or we don't destroy the bushes, because we need the weather, good, in good weather, and a good fresh hair. So the Samburu believe that everything on this planet was put here by the same supreme being that created all of us and that uh, each creature on this planet is here for a reason and it is the creator uh, who knows what the reason is and therefore as human beings we are not supposed to judge any of those creatures uh, or destroy any of those creatures and that's why it's been very easy for them to pick up that uh, conservation. Great, we've come to the end of the show and remember this was the year ender. We are glad you've been with us from October when this series began airing on NTV. We have lots lined up for you in the year 2021 and our vision is to take the show a notch higher. On behalf of the entire Champs Media team that has been producing this show, many thanks for watching and Happy New Year. Welcome to Westridge Schools in Thicker Greens. We are CBC compliant. Admission is ongoing for playgroup, pre-primary 1 and 2, also grade 1 to 4 and class 5 to 7, all mixed. We also have a girls boarding high school. The safety of your child is assured with spacious classrooms and dormitories. We have unmatched modern laboratories, gymnasium, swimming pool, and a spacious playground. Secure your chance. Call us on 0794-896-995. Westridge Schools. Aim high. We fly together.